Stop it. Stop it. You knew I was coming. Great to see everybody here. I'm John Zadar, and today we have a special guest with us. You knew Lily was going to be on vacation. We have Swinging Bull. He is one of our uh, professional shot callers over at Penny Boys. Knows his stuff inside and out. He's more of a big market player, but all the markets are connected into the same nervous system. So we're glad to have you here. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Um, good to be here. I uh, had a lot of exciting stuff going on uh, this this week. Um, you know, we played the ups and the downs. Um, so had a, quite a bit of price action today that I wouldn't mind going over later. But uh, I'll let you go ahead and finish your introduction. Very, very happy to be here. Oh, basically, we are done with my introduction. It's not a big deal. I'm just going to throw up some news now. Cross your eyes. Sorry for that, folks. <laughs> All right. Here we go. So now this is news I've looked at, folks, over the last five or six days. 99% uh, of it comes off of the OTC market. This is good news. I've read every single one of these. There's no financial uh, reports. There's no public offerings. It's not that kind of news. It's your mergers, your acquisitions, your joint ventures, distribution deals, all the juicy stuff. So take your time, read it. If you didn't get a chance to see it because you came late, this is recorded. You can catch up with it later. All right. You said you got some economics for us, man. I'm needing some. I've been stuck down here in the OTC. I haven't paid much attention, but I did see what happened on the SPY today. Oh my yeah. God. Yeah. SPY was a pretty interesting uh, day today. Uh, what happened was 8.30 a.m. Eastern. Uh, we had the CPI data uh, get, get reported there. And uh, the previous report um, came in at 8.3% for the CPI data there. And uh, the forecast uh, was 8.1%. So they were expecting it to come down a little bit. Um, it actually came in above the forecast at 8.2%. Um, so what's happening here is, is inflation really isn't cooling uh, as fast as the feds would like it to. Um, so the, mar the market actually reacted pretty negative to it um, in pre-market. Um, we did have a gap down, um, basically gap down from about 360 um, and we ultimately hit a low of 348. So 12 point move on the SPY to the downside, reacting to that CPI data uh, news that was released this morning. Um, and then the interesting thing was once we hit a bottom at 348, uh, buyers stepped into the picture and uh, we actually had a hell of a bull run uh, today, basically uh, almost a 20 point run to the upside. Wow. Which, uh, it doesn't happen often on the SPY. Uh, but, you know, we literally hit a low of 348 and uh, basically hit a high of uh, 367.51, which is about 368. We'll go ahead and call that a 20 point move to the upside in one day after the bad CPI data was released. Um, yeah. So inter interesting there. And my thoughts moving forward, um, you know, even though we had this rally today, um, you know, I, I just don't think the inflation is cooling as much as, you know, as quick as they would like it to the feds. Um, so I think they're going to continue to um, hike interest rates, um, at least a couple more hikes for the foreseeable future. Um, and, you know, I, I don't think that's going to slow down or, or come to a halt as far as the, uh, the increases go until we can see, um, you know, a couple months of declining inflation data. Um, so that's what I got there. And, and that's what I that's what I'm looking at moving forward is, uh, you know, even though we did have a rally today. Um, I do think we we're, that the selling is not over with um, until we can get this inflation under control. And then, of I course, agree. Um, and, until that happens, the interest rates are just going to keep going up. And, and just so um, everyone knows, you know, a lot of people associate these uh, federal interest rate hikes uh, to mortgages. But th th these are also the underlying rates for your credit cards, your automobile yeah. loans. The um, board. So, yeah, the, these interest rate hikes, it's not just for homes, everyone. <laughs> Um, it, it's involved in a lot of aspects of our life. So just keep that in mind as the rates are going up. Um, you know, it's it's definitely not good for the uh, the buying power. Yeah, between the inflation and the rates going up, we're getting less and less money to hang on to, which is the bottom line, in my opinion, why all of the markets, big and small, are suffering right now. There's just not a lot of money for us to dispose of towards the markets when everything else needs to be taken care of and is all getting more expensive. Right. Yeah, no, I totally agree with that. And, and that kind of leads us into the next thing. Um, tomorrow, Friday, October 14th, uh, we do have retail sales data 
uh, being released in the morning, 8.30 a.m. Eastern report as well there. Um, so that's going to uh, kind of paint a little picture for us as well. Um, if we couple that with the, the, raising, uh, the, the rising interest rates for uh, you know, consumer spending, uh, well, tomorrow's report, what retail sales is going to tell us, um, you know, are people still spending money, um, uh, you know, extra money? Um, so that report tomorrow is going to line up uh, pretty good with the CPI report today. And as soon as those numbers get released tomorrow on the retail sales, that'll paint a better picture of what we could be looking at moving forward. So that's what I have my eyes on for the remainder of this week. That Fed information, whatever it is the Feds talk about, it always has an effect one way or the other. And most of the time it's guessable, but not yep. all the time. I mean, that wasn't good news today. Obviously, the market reacted negatively initially pre-market. But as you said, it was very appealing at that price, obviously, because the buyers stepped in and just haven't stopped stepping. Yeah, it, it's been a hell of a day to the upside after we dropped in pre-market. Um, I'm going to post something in the comments for everyone watching. Um, this okay. is going to be um, a, a free link uh, to the economic, uh, the U.S. economic uh, calendar. And uh, this is where you can go to find uh, when the scheduled reports are going to be released for, um, you know, inflation numbers and interest rate hikes and uh, Fed meetings and stuff like that. So it's a free calendar. Feel free to use the link and, and I hope you enjoy it. Appreciate that. It's always nice to be in touch when the feds are going to talk. I mean, it's like knowing when the earthquake's going to happen. You can yeah. get under the table. <laughs> expect a lot of volatility before, during, and after any of these big impact economic reports for sure. Now, we don't feel it much down on the OTC, not as big as the uh, major markets feel it, but the ripples do go out there. Um, and, and taking a look at our OTC market today, let me refresh this page. See if we've done anything better. Well, thank God our share volume is over 10 billion, folks. We've been struggling to stay over 10 billion shares. And a year ago, you know, considering we had been falling since February a year ago, that would have been another five or six months through the fall. We were doing at least two and a half to three times as much. I mean, we were up at 60 billion in February and we were down to like 20, 30 billion back in October, November. And it's just been getting worse and worse. And now we're down to 12 billion. We are up over 10 billion two days in a row now. Woo woo. Uh, dollar volume is still under our average of 2.1. We don't have a lot of money in the market. That's the problem with inflation. Trades. Well, by golly, we've gotten over 300,000 trades twice, three times this month. Wow. We're wow. doing something. That's amazing. Yeah, yeah, I know. It's it's, And this is half of what we normally do. So that's the problem with the market right now. Between everything that's going on in the world, first it was COVID, then it was a war, then it was inflation. I mean, the things just keep rolling on. The market's going to sit here. Lots and lots of great buys right now, folks. OTC, major markets, but we're not sure they're done falling. Yeah, they're at great buy prices right now, but there may be better buy prices. That's not to say starter positions wouldn't be prudent. You might want to do that because they are low. All right, I've got some stocks thrown up here. Let me see if we got any questions yet. No, so I got some free time here. These are some stocks that have been catching my eye through the day and through the week. Thought I'd share them with you. You can do whatever you want with the information I give you. Um, Let's start with this one. I saw this one running this morning. All right, it did pretty good. It ended the day at 78 cents. This is uh, Tear, T A E R, Tarzier Limited. They're on the pink tier. It's got all their green ticks. They're a shell company. They say they're not making any money yet. Seems to me that is done deal. They came out with uh, some information today saying they are no longer a shell company that they're now working with a Chinese U.S. exporter that buys yellow corn from the U.S. and sends it to China. Uh, obviously, anytime a OTC pink comes out of shell, it's a big deal, especially for the people that have been holding the stock. Finally, the company's doing something. They're making some money. You normally get a bounce. And, you know, in this market, you've got people that have been suffering, waiting on the floor for a long time for a bounce. So don't expect it to hang around up there at the top for long. The people come in and take those profits quick. They're tired of sitting on the floor in most of these stocks. So the surges are short lived. Uh, let's take a look at that uh, ticker chart so we can see what she is looking like if she has any continuation hopes been a lot of deals today 
a lot of them in the late afternoon. I was quite surprised to see how much good news came out in the later part of the day. Uh, let's get our charts up here. Hampaco made a deal today. All right, T-A-E-R. Let's go all the way back to a year. Let's just get our full big picture here. So she hasn't been doing a lot. She's been rolling very lightly across the ocean top. She did start to pull away about, uh, what do we got there? Uh, almost, yeah, about three weeks ago, she got up on top of her 50, has been floating on the 50. And today with that news, it has jumped. Technicals are real strong on the long chart. Let's come on all the way down to that 20-day, one hour. So what are we jumping through here? We're at a low bubble of four cents, and today we hit a high bubble of 18 cents. And she's been riding right around here in the average of about uh, eight cents, right around there. We can see our 50-day SMA came into the picture. You can see the price respects that new SMA. When you see a new SMA on the board, you can almost count on the price going over and tapping it like a tag team wrestling match. may not stay there, but it's going to give homage to it. Bink recognition. <laughs> <laughs> and we've got strong technicals. Let's just look at that five-day, five-minute. Well, she's kept most of her gain. She's definitely above the 50% mark. She's holding up there right now at uh, 15 hitting 18 as her high and starting off down here at eight. So that, that's not bad. She had what, about 150% gains roughly at her high. And she got that late in the day. She ran up until 1230 virtually, stayed up there for a while. So you had an opportunity to get out here. I don't know a whole lot about this company. Obviously working with a company in China could be a big deal. Um, taking our corn. Not too crazy about that, but hey, we got to sell it to somebody. Yeah. And China's a pretty big customer. So what the heck? Uh, let's see what else we got here. We got any questions coming in? How about sober moving? Hey, sober. Okay. You brought it up. We'll talk about it. Sober. I did cover this the other day, and it's a stock I really do like, folks. I like this company. Sober has invented a new technology for measuring alcohol in our systems. Uh, it is a your finger, just using your fingerprint, you put it on a device, you go into your employer, you punch in, you touch this thing. It knows you by your fingerprint and then it smells the vapors in your skin and can detect the alcohol just from the vapor in your skin. Wow. And it is 97% accurate where a breathalyzer is only 88% accurate. So it's a better option. Plus they've got the wristband for the judicial system. So all the parolees, people on probation, all of these people can wear it and they know exactly when you've taken alcohol and it has GPS. And if you try to remove it, the people get a warning. So that could easily be used, you know, in encompassing the entire judiciary system. And they've yeah. got these on the market. They're selling them right now. They have not reported any revenues, but they plan on reporting before the end of the year. So that's yeah. what we're looking forward to. Yeah, I was just looking up a little bit about this company and, um, you know, not only do they do they do these non-invasive uh, alcohol detection, but also heavily involved in identity verification. So I wonder if they're going to kind of mix those two in together where they can give you an alcohol test and and, and know and like confirm that it's it's you. Uh, like oh, that, that is process. what it does. OK, it wow, did. that's interesting. Yeah, for like, uh, you know. You work for somebody and you're driving a lift truck or you're driving semis. You got to come in, punch in, and you just put your finger. It knows exactly who you are. The one device will hold a thousand users. And the device obviously isn't going to make them rich selling them. But there's a $30 fee per month per person on that yeah. device. Yeah. So that, that that's where they're going to make their money through the use of the device. Yep. Yep. Absolutely. And the wristbands are 300 bucks, and there's $20 a month for each one of those. Wow. And you can see this would just get bigger and bigger. Any driver, yeah. I mean, everybody, everybody may, may want that. And they're gonna, not just going to use it for alcohol. They're going for opiates, cannabinoids, uh, THC, whatever the problems are, they want to be able to detect it before you get behind the wheel or wherever it is you're working. Right. I mean, you know, if you think about how things are kind of progressing just just as a nation and technology and things like that, I mean, eventually, maybe several years from now, um, you know, maybe the feds make it to where uh, before you're even able to start the car, you know, or, 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 these, or, or these these cars um, are going to be manufactured with these pre-installed in Don't them. Don't even bring that up. Yeah. They, they have gotten, uh, they have made two deals. They have two companies they've partnered with that work with Ford and Chrysler. 
Um, they have already been contacted and somebody, a big organization yesterday or the day before came out and said, we want these alcohol detection devices as standard equipment in every yeah. single car. I, and I, that's yeah. what they're pushing towards, the judicial yeah. system and the automotive. Yeah, I mean, I, I could even see uh, particular states like maybe just requiring it, you know, like the, the governors, maybe they might not wait on the feds right. and, and, and certain governors of, you know, maybe California, New York, you know, uh, maybe they just pass a state law where, you know, if you buy if you have a car in, in that state or you're driving in that state, that, mm -hmm. that you have to have one on your car, whether yep. it was installed at the manufacturer or when you go get your driver's license, you got to show paperwork that you installed one, regardless if you've had DUIs or not. So right. they, they, these are progressive right. thinking states. And, um, you know, instead of reacting to things, they're going to be Preventive. proactive. Yeah, they're going to try and be proactive with, is what we're seeing in a lot of these progressive states. And and may, maybe to live in that state and have a driver's license, you might have to have one on your car. I mean, who knows what the future holds and what the politicians end up doing with, with the state laws and the federal laws. But I could totally see something like that uh, becoming. Real. Yeah, I definitely think it's new technology that's more accurate it's less bulky it's it's easier to use i just think it's gonna i mean if every police car had one every probation officer i mean that's already millions right. And millions right there yep absolutely. right there yeah they already got a big uh pool of uh clientele already ready to go probably so so you can see we did look at this back when we had this huge run here she had a dynamite run from about $2.50 to $3.74. That's about 50% jump right there. She did fall real quick. I mean, these are short, folks. That first half hour of the day, you've got to watch very closely. They used to be an hour. When I came into trading, it was called fool's hour, and you could pretty much count on 60 minutes of what we get now in a half hour. But we called it fool's hour because you can easily be fooled easily be fooled. Things are ripping it up and then all of a sudden they're falling it down. So you've got to watch these quick. I have a habit of getting out on an upswing on a morning play because when it starts to fall, by the time you get your order in, you've lost more than you were asking for. You sell while it's going up, you get more than you were asking for. It just feels better. So we drew up our 50% uh, mark here. I also threw up the Fibonacci and you can see days later, that's where we've ended up right dead center of our Fibonacci at the 50% mark. So this has bearing way down the road. These big surges create new algorithmic lines that perpetuate. They just keep going down the chart. We had a nice jump here late in the day. So I am presuming if we go look for information that we're going to see something because that's a late bump. It's not something that happened in the morning. Let's see here. Sober. Yeah, I think this company will be great for a long hold. Anytime she dips would be a good time to buy. Yeah. That's yeah. Well, well, while you're pulling that up, I actually have Sober pulled up on uh, my platform here and uh, had very similar levels to what you were you were showing there, Jersey. And um, you want to share your screen? Uh, no, I'll just explain it real quick. I just want to call out some price targets and some levels to the upside and downside. Uh, but uh, currently in after hours, Sober's trading at three dollars and two cents here. Um, I really think the two ninety four area is a key level that we need to hold um, to see some continuation here. Uh, and, you know, if we're not able to hold that level, um, be looking for probably the mid 270s area is where I see a retracement to the downside. Um, that's assuming we can't hold the 294. If we can hold the, the, the mid 290s here um, in after hours and, and uh, moving forward into uh, opening session tomorrow, um, levels to the upside, you know, if we can hold this mid 290s, Looking at 310 and then possibly a, a 325 as price target number two. Um, so just wanted to mention that since, uh, Jersey, you, you brought up the ticket here on so I appreciate that. We, yeah, charting absolutely. is the most important thing. I do a lot of research. I look for data, but the charts, they are precedent. They take precedent. I mean, we read those charts, all the technical lines we use. These are lines everybody's using like a traffic light in the city. Everybody respects that light. We all respond to it at the same time, the same way. We count on it. And that's how it works. So the charting is probably the most important thing you should study out of everything next to the management. But honestly, you could have shit management, excuse my language. <laughs> and, and if the stock is running, it doesn't matter. It's all about the investors at that moment. It has nothing to do with other factors. It's how the investors feel. And if you see it growing, growing 
the facts of the company don't matter. Day traders are there for the moment. And sure. your, your data, your research, that's for the long. You know, if you're day trading, you don't need to do as much DD than if you're investing. If you're going to be putting your money in their hands for a long term, you want to know as much as you can. But if you're sure. just getting in and out, you just want to know where the front door is and the back door is. That's all you yeah. need to know. Yeah, I mean, just to kind of piggyback off off of that jersey, um, you you hit it on the head there. You know, long term investors, uh, if you're managing a retirement account or what have you, you know, th those are the companies we need to be looking at the fundamentals, the the financials, the balance sheets, the PE ratios, or you know, what's the earnings per share? Is it positive? What, what's their debt to asset ratio? Um, how much is their revenue? Are, are we seeing some sort of revenue and income growth over, you know, year over year? Those are the types of things we're looking for, um, for, you know, retirement uh, plays and, and long term in investment uh, plays. Now, just what Jersey was saying, you know, if you're scalping during the day or day trading, I mean, most of the successful uh, day traders that I know, um, they, they don't care about the DD. OK, they don't care about the fundamentals. They're, they're, they're playing the, the price action. They're playing the volume. They're playing the technicals. They're in and out. And, uh, you know, that's just how they roll. They're looking for supply and demand zones and things of that nature um, and actually playing the price action. So just keep that in mind, uh, folks, you know, um, you know, moving forward, the, the DD and checking the fundamentals and financials. You, you have to do that on your long term positions, even if you're swing trading something. Yeah, I mean, to be honest with you, if you're going to hold it overnight in, in the market that we've had, this the type of market we've had this year, if you're going to hold it overnight, I would definitely be doing some DD on that stock. If you're day trading, feel, feel free to go wild on the technical analysis. And that's all you need. So just wanted to point that out. I love it. I love it. Um, this is a very interesting stock I want to share with you folks. Uh, let me see if we have any more questions over here. Crazy. That's not a ticker. <laughs> Who's crazy? <laughs> me or the show? Um, this was brought up to me by one of my viewers, T. Rick. He does a lot of DD, finds a lot of interesting stuff. We talk on Twitter and here. He brought this to my attention. INTK, Industrial Nanotech. You can see that price, folks. It's low. It's dirt cheap right now. It's double zero seven and a half. Well, they had a tweet come out today. Now, I'm going to show you that tweet. But before I show you that tweet, I want to show you what the company's doing. They've got products already in Lowe's. They just had a news press come out just a short term ago of their products in Lowe's. Well, that's like a contract in Walmart. That's no little thing. And the stock is 007. They create these very unique products. I, I think one of them is like talking paint. Uh, changes colors when things get hot. You could put them on hotel doors or your heating oh, pipes, wow. your boiler, and you know when things are hot and get, getting weak or dangerous. Yeah. And they've got other special products as well. They've had here recently, they've just hired two people, one that worked for them for nine years and 12 years as subcontractors, if you will. Well, they've hired them on as new employees, one to work as the representative in Asia and one to work as a rep representative in Europe. And they're already here in the U.S., but I want to come up here to the news that came out today, right there. Now, I don't know where this is posted. It's not over on the OTC market. It's not a filing. It's not a news press. It's only here. I have not been able to find it anywhere else. And I've even argued with somebody on Twitter that it's legitimate. I said, look, it's the company putting the information out. We're on their Twitter account. So, you know, you can either call them a liar or just take it for granted that it's legit. Well, here they announced that Industrial Nanotech announces a $28 million lawsuit against Aaron John Kembley of Boynton Beach, president of R. George Associates. And they go down here and tell you about the situation. But the bottom line is here is they say, when this comes to a conclusion, the money they receive from the lawsuit, they're giving to the shareholders. Oh, bottom wow. line, they're just going to give it all to the shareholders. Now, the price of the stock is at 007 right now. Let me see. Can you guys see that? The calculator? Yeah. I've already done the math here. You take the 28 million, if that's what they get, and you divide it by how many shares they have, which is what I did, the outstanding share count. You come up with $14.49 per share. And that's how they're paying everybody pro rata based on how many shares you have. So if you got 100 shares, well, multiply that out. It may wow. only be worth $7 or 70 cents, 70 cents right now. But they're going to be having a special distribution. And right now, that's the way it calculates, you know, tentatively. 
but it's something you should keep your eye on. Now, in saying that HM, uh, HCMC, I believe it is, they were suing Philip Morris for uh, patent infringement on a vape product, and they were expecting $700 million or some silly big number like that. And it had the stock running hard just on people assuming they were going to get free money sometime soon. And I always said, there's no way. Philip Morris would rather pay $10 million out to their lawyers and keep it tied up than give HCMC $700 million. And it never occurred. It just never finished. But this could take two years. You have no idea how long a lawsuit can take. But there you go, folks. It's something to at least put on your watch list for news. There's just certain stocks you want to watch on the news and see if anything pops up before you find it on the chart. Normally, it would be too late in those situations. Yeah, I wouldn't mind sharing a little bit of technical analysis on this. I'll go ahead and share my screen here. All so right. I, yeah, no problem. I got the daily chart pulled up here on INTK. Okay. Um, so what I'm looking for for technical analysis is you'll see three days ago, we had this, this very nice hammer candle form here. Um, I'll go ahead and highlight that so everyone can see it. So I had this real nice hammer candle form there. Um, so this is actually prime for, for a play here that you could actually create a plan for and uh, see how it goes. So after this hammer candle, we get the doji candle, which tells us indecision. So, of course, I'm not going to enter there. Um, but the very next candle looks like we finished out today with another hammer candle. I would feel safe entering this position here at 0.0076. Um, that could be your entry. And uh, just to have a concrete plan. Uh, you can put your stop loss uh, right, right down here at 0 0.0065. You're basically going to place it at the bottom um, underneath the wick of this of the ha the first hammer candle that formed. We can mark that red and then uh, levels to the upside for take profit. Um, you know, we, we're probably going to find some resistance uh, right, right around here at 0 0.008. I mean, that would be a beautiful uh, take pro uh, first take profit there um, or even trim your position. And then, uh, you know, as long as it continues up, um, you know, I, I, I'd say probably around 0 0.009 would be target two for me. Uh, so I can go ahead and mark, mark those out here. Um, so since we got the hammer candle, the doji, and then another green hammer candle, um, there's the level to the downside where you can put your stop loss. You could enter here. And uh, of course, we take it to uh, take profit one right there. Um, you could even just trim your position 75% uh, maybe take, take 75% profit there and then leave it extra 25% um, in case we, we come up to this 0 0.009, you could take profit on, on your remaining position there for take profit too. So uh, just some good levels to point out there. Um, yep, absolutely. Loving it. Loving it. We love this input. It's a little more than we get around here. So extra is good we love having new people on here because you get new flavors new new information new styles new outlooks on how people are trading so hey i am really glad you're here today thanks pal yeah absolutely uh let's see we're still good here hello everyone can you please look at the a oh yes that's one of the stocks i've got up on my chart here ahfd and i actually hold this stock share a screen let's get you back up your little puppy bingo all right, uh, AHFD. Yeah, they had news today. Now, AHFD actually had news on the 26th, which is pertinent to the news that came out today. As a matter of fact, the news that came out today enlightens us on what they were actually talking about back on the 26th. They weren't very clear. Actually, it looked like they were losing their mind back here. Look at this. They're going up and down with the share structure. The share structure was in havoc and danger big time. Active Health Foods has terminated the previously announced $20 million public offering. Okay, great. We're glad to hear that. And instead has approved a uh, reverse split of one in 7,000. I'll take the public offering instead. Thank you very much. <laughs> Door number one, please. They say the post split would leave 100 million common shares. So... They're not going to put up to 30 billion, 37 billion authorized shares that they were going to do with the public offering. I mean, they were going to rip that up, sell 20 million more, add up to 37 billion for our authorized shares. So it's like, well, what is going on here? Well, their plan was to uplist. Well, at this price here, triple zero four, a one in 7,000 split wouldn't get them anywhere near a NASDAQ price. They'd have to go a lot further than that. So I'm not sure what their whole plan was here. 
But when you go look at the news that came out today, is it the 13th? It is. Active Health Foods rescinds and terminates Bioidentical Hormones, Inc. share purchase agreement. This is why they had to do the split. It was part of the deal. Active Health Foods has signed a rescission agreement with Bioidentical Hormones, rescinding and terminating the share purchase agreement signed on June 7th. It was an express condition of the SPA between the parties that Active Health Foods implement the reverse split and then issue 70 million shares to bio shareholders. Well, they had put this into FINRA. Have to ask permission. Got to get it approved. FINRA said, no, no, you can't do it. And it's like, why? Well, check this out. I tell you all the time. Now, I don't know. It says pink current up here. Pink current. You cannot have bald spots in your financials. If you're late on anything, they get you for it and they put you on pink limited. Well, they tell us here that they are missing a filing, a filing oh. back in 2014, and they're missing one in 2015. So that's why it got disapproved because they weren't current on their filings. And the last paragraph down here just goes to, we're blaming the last management. That was on them. That was seven years ago. We weren't aware of it. <clears throat> Bull, it's your company. You should know exactly what's going on. You should know how many filings you have. That's True. not cool. That's yeah, not they're, cool. They're, they're, they're playing the blame game because they don't have answers. Right. But the bottom line is, is that one, they're not going to be doing the split anymore. They're not That's doing good. the public offering anymore. They're not increasing the authorized shares anymore. Very good news. Doing... They, they needed that good news for sure. Right. And people are excited that you're not going to mess with the shares. Now, I do believe they said something else down here about another deal. Let me see. Uh, we have been advised by the council that this problem is insurmountable and have no choice but to rescind the acquisition. We are currently in negotiations with another healthcare company to replace bio. So on top of all the, the shares aren't going to be touched. We still have hope for a deal to come through. And that's why she's running today. So, and it's a huge gain, 300%, but she started off at triple zero one, the absolute floor. You cannot go any lower on the open market. So one to two is a hundred percent, two to three, 200, three to four, 300. You just quadrupled your money. So it looks like a huge gain, and it was a huge gain. There's no doubt about it. That's a huge move on the triple zeros. We normally don't see 300% unless there is strong news. Um, let's take a look at that chart. Like I said, I'm a holder of this one, and obviously, I didn't pay no triple zero one for it. So it's a bag right now. Yeah. Let me see. AHFD. Let's see what we got over here. Oh, too many letters. You might have to Oh, there you go. Yep. All right. Let's see. We'll go back a year, see where I paid for. <laughs> I've had it about a year. So she was back here a year ago, darn near the whole year ago at almost double zero seven. And she's yep. at triple zero four right now. Mm -hmm. Had that downfall and has been hugging the 200, not getting far from it. As a matter of fact, it's just here recently that she's actually starting to pull away from it and even get more distance. There's your floor. She's just been hanging on the floor. She's just not got anything. We've had some pops here, but you know, it always comes back to 001. Um, I do believe they were a shell company, weren't they? Yeah, they're a shell company, so they're not making any money right now. Yeah, and, they're, 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 they're a holding company. Yep, that's right. Yeah, so until they actually get some business going, there's not going to be any reason for people to invest. Um, I, I'm surprised to see we got 300% bounce out of this today. I mean, yep. basically, it was just that we're not. And I'm glad because I have been hit with 32 reverse splits. I've been buying OTC stocks since 2018. I didn't know anything about trading. That's when I got in. Cannabis was all I was into for the first two years, and they fell for two years. Yeah. So it was a horrible market. And I've accumulated more. So I've got about 120 OTC stocks. 32 of them have done reverse splits. Really, really took a big chunk of my investments away. Now we're, it's a waiting game. You're just going to be holding those and eternally because there's no way you're going to be selling your $800 investment for eight cents. You're just not going to do it. And the market, the way it is right now, there's not a lot of hope, a lot of good companies. I get questions all the time. What's wrong with this company? What's wrong with that? I thought there's nothing wrong with them. 
It's market sentiment. There's just a lot of pressure on the market right now. Not a lot of money coming in. The companies themselves have to survive. Reverse splits is one of them. Public offerings is another. They got to generate income if we're not going to give it to them. So there's a lot going on right now. And this is a huge jump. I would watch it just because it is abnormal down here on the trip zero to see that huge of a jump. See if there's any more excitement tomorrow. But if there is, I would expect it to be short-lived. I wouldn't expect it to go through the whole day. Speaking yeah. of, how much trading did we get today? That's good. That's good. Yeah, That's it good. was, uh, yeah, 163 volume today on AHFD. And uh, also towards the end of the day, um, had, a, had a order block of 16, almost 17 million come in. Uh, towards the end of the day, accompanied by a handful of orders for 7 million, 7 million, 5 million, 9 million. All these came at the end. Um, you know, looking at the, the uh, weekly time frame, um, if you're willing to hold it, I mean, this could easily be a double upper. I'm seeing the, uh, the next resistance on the weekly chart, point zero, uh, triple zero six here. Um, so that, that would be a double up there um, if you're just looking for a, a price target that. Um, you know, we could the, the next one that I see to the upside on the bigger time frame charts. But lots of volume came in towards the end of the day on this one. And, and that's why we got that uh, that nice green candle there. So. And the technicals are really strong, folks. Uh, the PPO and the MACD are both climbing hard. The PPO is a percentage of the price or the MACD is the full price. They're akin to each other. They work the same way. I really like the PPO. It's more responsive than the MACD as far as I'm concerned. Yeah. And you can see our ADX here. This is a simple tool just showing you trend continuation. It's not about which direction this is pointing. It's just is the line continuing in the same direction it is. So we've got an uptrend right now. And that ADX is going in that direction straight. It could be going down. As long as it doesn't change direction, it says it's continuing in the direction it's going. Uh, the only thing that's down a little bit is our RSI. It's underneath 60, but everything looks like it has some heat to it. It's definitely worth a watch in the morning. So hopefully that gets you for AHD, and I hope that's good for me too, because I would love to see one of my bags turn into a pot of gold. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> let's see what we got here um i gotta reach over to my other screen here hey, uh, got vct and cscw um just added shares of intk with two minutes to go on the clock <laughs> Good for you thoughts on Thay airway uh t-a-y-n-f uh, thai thoughts on thai airways on the expert market, but looks like they're trying to get financials back. All right, let's take a look at ABCT, CSCW, and Thai. So we'll start there. Um, let me see. What was the first one? ABCT. That that was on the list today of uh, stocks running. Yeah. Yep. This is actually not quite in the o OTC market. Um, it's not in the OTC market. We were. Uh, this is on the uh, regular equity side here. Good. And um, we've been trading this quite a bit um, in our premium discord and, uh, you know, just basically just playing the volatility. Uh, but th th this thing, uh, th this chart can go bananas if it wants to. So we're just basically play playing the volatility here and, uh, you know, lo looking at the bigger time frames. Um, we recently actually just gapped up on this back on the, the beginning of this month, October 3rd. Uh, this thing was trading around 21 cents. Now, actually, I believe that was due to a reverse split. That, that's right. One for 15 reverse split. Okay. So they did the reverse split and uh, looking at the bigger time frames, um, it, it has come down. It hit a high of 364 after the reverse split. Um, and now we're trading down here at 173. Look for a floor around 121. If we lose that, uh, the stock is definitely going to be in trouble. Um, levels to the upside, probably around 225 ish. Um, from where it's at right now so keep your eyes on those two levels that's what i'm seeing on the four hour chart at least and this is post split and everyone keep in mind you know i know reverse splits are bad um as far as long-term investors go um but you know when we do scalps and day trades during the day um, we actually love when stocks reverse split um, number one we're not holding it before the reverse split what we're doing is day trading it and and um, doing momentum plays after the reverse split because of the fact that now their free float is tiny because that's what the re reverse split is going to do to the company's um, right. shares. So, 
you know, if a company had, you know, maybe, you know, I don't know, a hundred to 200 million free float before the split. And then the, after the reverse split, you know, they might only have five to 10 million float. And at right. that point, at that point, after the split, that's when I jump in and play the volatility because we get the big moves. Because Low float volatility. Yeah. And I mean, it doesn't take much volume to move these things after right. the reverse split. So I actually have a screener set up specifically alerting me when companies do a reverse split. Um, I'm not in any of these positions before it. All I care about is, are did they reverse split or not? If they did, I'll put them on a watch list. I know they have a very tiny float. As soon as I see the volume picks up, I'm in there like a ninja scalping it. So <laughs> that, that's my uh, observations on ABCT and as far as what's gone on um, after they just split the beginning of this month. Did they have any news come out here recently? Um, let's see. We can take a look there. Um, I'm looking too. I just don't know if they are only running because it's a low float now or if they actually had something come out that's new. I mean, a lot of the news they've been having lately hasn't really been well. Um, they did release um, a report, uh, I think a day ago, basically admitting that they need additional capital um, to fund current operations. So be careful there. Um, you don't want to, you, you know, this is not something I'm putting in my retirement account or, or even holding, you know, overnight or anything like that. Uh, stock like ABCT, I'm strictly day trading and, and, uh, and momentum trading this guy. If you're already in it, um, like I said, you know, the, the levels to the upside, we're probably looking at two and a quarter from here if we can keep this momentum going. All right. Uh, let's see. Our next one there was CSCW. CSCW. I'm not familiar with that one. Or am I? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This is another one. Um, got lots of reverse split um, requests here. This one reverse split towards the end of September. Um, and it was a one for 40 uh, reverse split. And um, right now they're trading at $1.30. Um, I have personally played this from one to two dollars before, um, actually just uh, right after the split. Um, this is one that came up on my screener after they reverse split. And then uh, sure enough, their their free float, um, you know, when, when I mean, you could do the math. Their free floats at five point seven five million right now. Um, so, you know, is it because the outstanding yeah. share count says it's only three point six outstanding? Oh, okay. Yeah. I mean, that's, uh, I'm not sure. Could be. Yeah. You, you, maybe that website didn't get um, up, updated there, but um, shares outstanding is actually 6.5 million free float 5.7. You know, the point is, is they had an astronomical, they had a really high float before the split after the split. Now their floats only 5.75 million. And uh, you know, I mean, just even just a little bit of, of volume is going to push this thing and it's already gone from a dollar to uh, about 2.30 and then uh, we're, re we're retracing right now, but on the daily chart, we, we did have a nice green day today, um, up, up, you know, about seven and a half percent here. Um, but another one that we traded after the split because of the low floats and it doesn't take a lot of volume to move these things. Yeah, she, uh, she's been hanging right around the 200, going over, going under, going over, going under. She doesn't get far from it. I haven't followed this one at all. I'm glad someone did. <laughs> what was that last one we had to look at? Uh, oh, the Thai. I've never heard of that one either. Tall. Yeah, uh, Thai Tall Airways. Airways. All right. There's your five minutes. Boy, oh, boy. Now, did this just come on? This looks like it hasn't got a lot of chart. All right. It's got chart. Not a lot of trading. Let's see. Four hours. All right. Yeah, that's all the way back to January. She was back here at two and a half cents, roughly. Fell down here to double zero six. That was a drop. Then hit our low bubble here about 10 days ago of triple zero five. Man, she's adding zeros on like they're in fashion. And right now she's low, folks. She's down here at double zero two. Not a bad price. The charts that come in on the five day don't get a lot of trade here. It's kind of tough to get your information if you don't have trading. So there was a penny on uh, the 30th, the very last day of last month. 
And then she fell down here, almost a thousand percent down. My God. And she's way down here still. Yeah, we're closer to triple zero one. Yeah. So I don't know. Has this got any news either? T A W N F. I'm totally. Is this an airline? Was it? Um, yeah, this is this is a Thai Airways. And uh, let's see here. On the expert market. So what is holding her there? Um, I don't see any disclosures here. It's kind of tough to tell. Um, normally, most stocks, unless they have caveat emptor over here, normally an expert is simply because they're late on filings. You know, it's not any criminal activities or anything like that. Um, and you can normally look at their filings and figure out what the problem is, what's missing, what they've got to get in. We don't have any information here. What, what did you say you thought was happening there, uh, Screen Guy 3? Uh, They're trying to get financials back in order. Bag holder here, thanks. Yeah, well, I guess some more, uh, you know, actually jumping over to the SEC site. If you're a bag holder, you'd want to know what's going on because they're not giving us a lot of information here. At, well, no information here at all. Um, share structure, do we get that? Well, we get the outstanding 2.1 billion. If it's updated, that's 2011. So I don't know if I'd trust that either. Showing the market cap here uh, yesterday. So you could probably figure that out just by looking at the price on the 12th and dividing it by uh, the market cap, but vice versa. And that, that'll tell you how many shares are actually here right now. So I would just say jump around online, see if you can find some information because I don't have any clue what's going on with this company without some more due diligence. Yeah, um, I mean, I, I, I did find a, a, a little bit of piece of news from a couple of months ago um, that, and this is positive news, that uh, I guess they've been dealing with the potential of bankruptcy, um, that, that kind of rumor um, has been floating around for a while. And just a right. couple of months ago, they released that uh, they're on track to possibly uh, quit bankruptcy by, by 2024. So may, maybe they try and prolong the proceedings or something like that. But uh, I guess right. if, they can, if they can make it to 2024, they, they said that they're going to be in good shape where they might not have to go through with it. So just a little Got bit it. of good, uh, good news there um, that I noticed. Kind of like Latim Q, the Latin airline company, went bankrupt and now they're restructuring. And, and now they're restructuring and, and some of them actually come back from the grave. They do. Yeah, they put out news today that they're running 80% capacity of their flights now. So oh, that's, wow. that's good. Yeah, it looks like they're going to come back from the grave. Uh, another one here. Uh, this news came out late today. Uh, nope, not that one. Uh, where is it? Uh, do, do, do. There it is. Yeah. I'm looking at the warrant here, but the company is Cox Corp. It looks like they're a SPAC maybe. Um, they are looking to get an extension. They need to cut a deal between November 3rd and June 3rd of next year. They've got to get it done or else they're just going to fail. And then all the investors get their money back for the shares they bought. Minus just a little tiny fee that's charged to the banks. But the investors actually get your money back if a SPAC fails to consummate a deal within their 18 to 24 months. But they say they've got something hanging out there. They're in preliminary discussions with DISH Network. So they're wow. trying to bring in DISH to go yeah. public here. So we're not actually looking at the stock. The stock, I believe, is $10 right now, as most SPACs are, thereabouts. And it's not a penny stock. But the warrants on these companies normally are. Now, the stock isn't going to move right now, even on good news. It might go up 10, 20, 30 cents, but that's because the shares aren't actually live yet. They're only worth $10 till the deal is consummated. So you don't see good news respond on the stock. You see it on the warrant because it's live. And today it had a 160% jump on this news. And this came out late. Matter of fact, let's go uh, take a look at that chart. You can probably get an idea when the news came out which means probably a lot of people didn't get to see it until tomorrow. So yeah, you could get yeah, another it, bounce. This, this is a big deal for this company, um, you know, with Dish, Dish Network here. Um, so the, the Dish company um, in talks to combine with Dish Wireless unit. Um, so the Dish Network chairman uh, backs back is in talks to, to buy uh, Cox. So um, what, what do you think about that, Jersey? About... Who buying conks? 
uh, I read that Dish Network might want to buy them. Well, that's the deal, isn't it? I mean, I think that's exactly what's all going on right there. Uh, right. The company has begun preliminary discussions with Dish regarding a potential business combination involving Dish's retail wireless business. They gotcha. got more here. It's a pretty long one. <laughs> I don't have time to read the whole thing here, but there's a lot of information there. Uh, but it is a big deal. Dish has been out there for a long time. Everybody knows who Dish is. I don't think uh, there's a person watching here that doesn't. So we don't know when it's going to happen. Oh, but okay. I, I I don't mean to interrupt Jersey. I I, I, I just read through all this and, and I figured it out. Uh, basically, Conks, okay, uh, Conks Corp is is already backed by Dish Network. And what's happening here is um, they, they want to buy Boost Mobile. That's what the deal is. Um, Conks and Dish Network want to take over Boost Mobile. Really? They didn't even mention that in this long-winded thing. Boost never even comes up. But there, there you go. Yeah. More information that focuses yeah. in on what the deal is all and about. And it's very interesting because Cox Corp is already kind of backed by Dish Network, um, but uh, Boost Mobile is a retail wireless unit of Dish Network. So it's almost like uh, Dish Network is going to kind of give Cox, um, you know, a big piece of their business um, to to basically run for them. Um, right. Which, so which this is going to bring in have, more revenue. Yeah. Yeah. It's going to bring in more revenue for Cox and. Uh, they're basically uh, Dish Network wants to give control of Boost Mobile to Conks Corp. So that's that's what's going on right now. Uh, just wanted to clarify that. Didn't mean to interrupt. <laughs> no, no. I You got to jump in or else I won't shut up. <laughs> <laughs> so the charts are showing some good strength there again. It's kept more than 50% throwing up our Fibonacci there. If you just poke the bottom of your surge and then poke the top of your surge, It'll put up some al algorithmic supports and resistances, if you will. And there's your 50% mark right there. And I always like to see a surge stay above that. I feel confident that it's not going to come any further down. May not climb, but it's not falling. That's the first step. Don't fall. Right. Yeah. So it has come down a little bit, but it is sitting well above the 50% mark. And it's splitting the difference right now on the nine-day SMA. It's tough to tell what she wants to do. All of the technicals look like she is falling a little bit right now, but it's fresh. The news just came out today, came out late. Matter of fact, uh, may have come out early. May have come out early because that, that's been running all bloody day. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, I'm showing it came out like 19 or 20 hours ago, but it's recent. <laughs> It came out yeah, they used to show the day. time here. They don't do that anymore. I like that when they did. <laughs> yeah. uh, let's see. Uh, went to their website. Nothing. All right. Let's see. Um, I got another one. Sober Taiwan. What's this one? Color technology. Here's one that you need to keep your eyes on, folks. This has been, I've been watching this one for about a year. Not for any real reason, but I post news. Every single day I go around on Facebook, Twitter, Discord, and I post news. It's just part of the things I do. And I posted lots of news in this company through the year. And they're making a biometric credit card. They're the only ones that got a patent on it. And it reads your fingerprint and then it transacts, and it won't work until your fingerprint hints it. This is the type of card it is, and they're two separate processors, so they're not bound together. It makes it much more secure to use, and they're already using this. There's a lot of vendors. There's a list of them right here. Nobody I've ever heard of, and then they say the smart metric biometric card is protected by issued patents that, in its view, would prohibit other biometric card companies from entering in particular, the United States market. And I remember seeing news over here just the other day, uh, right there. Smart Metric, the creator of biometric credit cards, is pleased to announce that its product testing with a major global credit card network has been streamlined. So this is, this is something that's going to save a lot of money from misuse, misappropriation, you know, all that stuff. And it's security again. We know that you're the person holding the card without having to go to a phone or another device and do something to prove who the heck you are. And nobody else is going to do it. And if anybody, Discover, Visa, MasterCard picks this up, these people have hundreds of millions of credit cards they put out a year. A year. They, I mean, I think there's more credit cards on the planet than there are people. 
I'm not lying. There are more yeah. because how many credit cards you carry in your wallet? I got more than yeah. one. Yeah. So it's a huge market that nobody's tapped into yet, but everybody's trying. So this company is right on the verge of getting their product out there. And the stock is now catching attention. I covered this the other day, just a li little bit because I like things that are first movers. I like new technology that's going to change the way we do things. The sure. metaverse, you know, that breathalyzer, that, that, vapor thing that detects your alcohol, this new credit card. Sure. That's how society works. We keep moving on to the next step of evolution in our products. This is the next step, obviously. Yeah, I agree. No, I really like this one. SMME, smart metric. Uh, I'm just going to share my screen real quick and show everyone cool. some, some quick technical analysis here. Amen. Um, yeah, yeah, I mean, Sure. No, I mean, uh, we, we had this uh, big uh, daily red candle here um, two days ago. Uh, pretty significant selling pressure there. Um, yesterday, we bounced back uh, pretty well. And then uh, today, uh, closed with an inverted hammer. Um, th this is bullish for me, folks. Um, we did have this big wick on the top here. Yes, that does indicate some selling pressure. But uh, what you have to keep in mind with the inverted candle is even though this this long upper wick here shows a lot of se uh, selling pressure uh, well the sellers pushed it down here to the bottom of this candle but the buyers were able to push it back up forming the inverted hammer uh, which which tells me that the sellers do not have complete control of this price action here um, so if you were to enter here um, I, I do like the risk reward just based on the candle setup um, the, the price today uh, closed at point zero, uh, uh, basically double zero two nine. Um, right. You could actually enter here, put you could put your stop loss um, between the, the close of yesterday's candle and the open of today's candle. Go ahead and mark that out here. We'll make a red line. Just a simple trading plan here, folks. Uh, so your risk is going to be double zero uh, is basically point zero 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 five. Triple zero five would be your risk levels to the upside. I'm thinking the top of this other inverted hammer here, we can go ahead and mark that green. Yep. And, and that's about um, double zero three eight to three nine. Um, so great risk reward here. Um, you're gonna risk triple zero five um, to gain um, double zero 10. So uh, that, that would just be a simple play here that you could set up and, and have a plan um, going into it. So of course, uh, you know, the take profit um, I'll make that arrow a lot bigger uh, to show you the, the, the amount of uh, upside you could have. Um, or if it decides to come back down to your stop loss, that's just going to be a little tiny arrow uh, because your uh, your risk is a lot smaller than what you can gain there. Um, so simple setup uh, that uh, maybe you guys could uh, keep in mind if you were looking to play SMME on the OTC market. So I'll give it back to you, Jersey. Yeah, so I, I do like that stock. I think it's a, a possible good long hold. Again, without a lot of competitors, having patents to protect their IP, that's what makes people rich. Being the first one out there and having protection for many years before anyone else can come out with anything to compete against them. So just one to keep in your list. Yeah, very cool. Um. Saw so this one at the end of the day, DBGI Digital Brands. They had news come out and it jumped just at the end of the day. DBGI finalizes new agreement for 20 million revenue sundry acquisition scheduled to close in November. They've got some sort of merger here. It doesn't sound all that big to me, but a lot of things go by me as not being big. And then all of a sudden I see the charts. It's like, what did I miss? Holy cow. You know, speaking of what did I miss? There's a company out there, CMGR, I believe it is. They're an influence company and they hire celebrities to do their influencing. And every time they bring someone in, which is pretty often, there's a bump on the chart. And depending on the popularity level of that celebrity, that determines how big the bounce is. And they had one sports guy come in who is in the Hall of Fame or something. He's won six Super Bowls or something like that. Holy cow, the stock jumped 300% that day. Yeah, it came down. But, you know, that doesn't matter to a day trader. You're catching the rises. Well, this company here had some news today that I think is going to be bigger than it is. It's a cannabis company. Maybe some of you have heard of this company. Uh, where is it? There it is. This is Charlotte's Web. 
Charlotte's Web is a CBD company. Uh, they have been around since the beginning, since the absolute beginning. They were very popular back in 2017 and 2018 when they didn't have a lot going on. Now they've got business. They're making money. And the thing is about most of these cannabis and CBD companies, they're making millions of dollars a quarter. Some of them are doing hundreds of millions of dollars a quarter. But because the cannabis market is still kind of under the radar, Nobody's paying attention to these companies making this big buku bucks. Well, they just made a deal, not with one team on the Major League Baseball, the entire league. They are now the sponsors, the CBD sponsors for the entire Major League Baseball. I mean, I always overlook sports as being a catalyst. And every time I do, I'm sorry for it because I don't follow sports. I don't, I don't get excited by it. Lots of people do, and that's what I'm overlooking. And not knowing who's who, I just don't respond the way they do. But this came out today, and she did jump. She didn't. She didn't. She was up when I looked at her. <laughs> uh, she's got everything in shape here. She's on the top tier of the OTC, uh, Charlotte's Web, which is the best tier. This is the yeah. most transparent. You're going to get all the information about the company. Nothing's held back. Yeah, Jersey. Easily... It was uh, it, it was yesterday. They were up uh, 36.9 percent yesterday on a huge green uh, volume candle. So, so it was yesterday. The news came out, so it did respond to it properly. Yep. Not as much as I was thinking, but again, it's a cannabis company. And cannabis companies just aren't getting that much love. Actually, it's really more of a CBD company than a cannabis company. Uh, they are on the NAS. No, they're not yet. They're trying to get to the NASDAQ. Yeah. They're not a penny stock anymore. Most people don't understand the difference. Penny stock exempt means they're not risky. They're not a startup company. They've proven themselves responsible, reliable. You've got to be in business three to five years with a clean record, all your filings caught up, and have millions of dollars in assets continually through that period of time. Then they say you're not a penny stock, regardless of your price, regardless of what market you're on. You're not a penny stock anymore, so we're not going to treat you like one. They don't have to jump through all the hoops and follow the same rules as penny stocks. So they're more trustworthy. It's a better investment, bottom line. So I think it's a big deal. I just don't think it's responded yet. But, you know, being a sponsor, I guess they're going to have billboards, maybe advertisements. Sure. Yep. Could be on TV. You know, it's, it's their game now. So I would expect... Just because of the connection, this company, Charlotte's Web, is going to get more attention from every baseball game. How many baseball games are there in a year? How many fields? So you got to keep your eye on this. Once Charlotte's Web CBD gets put up, let me tell you, CBD oil is big business. There's yeah. lots of people interested in it. It works. It relieves pain. We've got CBD receptors in our body that we've discovered since CBD became legal. That's right. We didn't even know we had CBD receptors. I think they found four or five of them so far, and they're smart. They are smart. When you take your CBDs, if you got a swollen knee or you got a headache, whatever, it knows where to send the CBD psychologically or physically. It knows how to disperse it and where to send it. These things are really smart and people are all over it and it's good money. They're charging way too much for CBD oil still. But I would keep my eye on Charlotte's Web. It's got a great reputation. Uh, I do believe the company got its name from a girl who died at a very young age. Her name was Charlotte and she had something, epilepsy or something. And CBD is the only thing that's seeming helping epilepsy real well right now. Yeah. Uh, cannabis company came out with a CBD drug. It's the only drug approved by the FDA that has CBD in it. It's why we can't put CBD in all of our food yet because they see it as a drug and not as a additive for food. And that's how they got their name uh, based on that lit little girl. If they had had this before, she may have been safe, but they just don't know. So there you go. Another big piece of news that came at the end of the day. I see we've gone over my five o'clock and how's our questions over there? D-M-A-N. All right, we're going to make that our last call. D-M-A-N. And let us just saying damn, and you just spelled it wrong. <laughs> <laughs> damn. All right, let's see if that actually comes up here. D-M-D-Man. Yeah, I do know yeah. this one. Yeah. I can't Point, remember. Trading at .0053 um, right now. What zero zero five three? Uh, I got uh, D M A N. I, I, I see demand brands. 
Um, trading at double zero five three. Is that what you got? I got double zero five eight. But we're close. I wonder why I got it. Are you on Weeble? Yeah. Wonder why Weeble's different than TOS. Uh, Maybe I'll, you I'll show a couple market cents. activity. Or, or uh, <laughs> you know, a, a couple of uh, fractions of a cent there. Well, you know, it's funny. On Thinkorswim's platform, prices go down to triple zero one. On TOS, they can't average a stock that goes below double zero one. Oh, wow. So, yeah. so anything I buy in triple zero, they round up on my cost factor to double zero one. I yeah. never know how much I really paid. I really don't know what my average price is until I do the math myself. They wow. said their system can't do it. It's like, what's it matter how many digits yeah. on this side or that side of the decimal? It's just sure. math. Yeah, this this D man. I mean, this D man. Uh, just looking at this on the on the one hour chart. Um, you know, just a couple months ago, this thing was at uh, over a cent. So we're at double zero five three. Um, a couple months ago, it was at one cent, which would be a substantial gain there. And it does look like it's on a little bit of an uptrend since hit, hitting a low of double zero four eight. Kind of trending up from there since we hit that low. So we'll see if we can keep making higher lows there and higher highs and uh, see how uh, how the price reacts to all the market, um, you know, all the market reports we have coming up. Let's see if we have any information over here that's helping or hindering B-Man. B-Man Brands, our share structure, we got about a half a billion in the float. Financials, they should be making something. Well, not really. Uh, okay, yeah, they started making money this year, which is always a good sign. 163 yeah. to 203,000, remembering those three zeros. And look at that. They must have digital products or they're just doing consulting because it isn't costing them anything for the money that they're making. Nothing wrong with that. Uh, <laughs> let's see about the news. They got lots of news. That's nice to see, but they haven't had anything since June when they got a new auditor. They may have got that auditor because they were pink limited. A lot of times they get new auditors to get out of trouble because their auditor got them in trouble. Uh, we do have something here. Demand Brand announces new CEO. So they're bringing in a lot of new people here. Uh, this is probably the one you need to read. Demand Brand CEO letter to shareholders of the year ahead. Pre presuming, let me see, that's 8-8. Eight, eight. Nope, don't do it. <laughs> that's the old CEO. That's the old guy. This is the new guy. So this isn't going to matter. Whatever he said is ancient news now. And disclosures. Anything there, 824? No, I don't see anything driving her right now. And she's up 11, almost 12% today. So if you know something about D-Man, maybe over at Twitter, there's something to be, be known. But some of these stocks, it is more about technicals. Things can just look right on the chart or a big block order was brought in. Love that about Twitter. They are really paying attention to the information coming up on scanners and charts. And they'll tell you about all sorts of stuff. Even that 911 order that just came in. Oh, there's the code. Get in now. So it can be fun just following technicals and not having to do any DD. And Twitter will definitely set you on fire with stocks that have just technicals. And I'll tell you what, I see them every single day. And there's stocks I don't share with you on my videos because there's nothing to say except people on Twitter are following technicals. And that's all I can tell you. We look at it and say, yeah, this is how it was set up. It looked like it was going to break out and it did. And there are lots of those every single day. No news, no filings, but the technicals are hot enough to get people interested to get in it together and get that stock moving for nothing. Yeah, <laughs> totally right. agree. Yeah. All right, folks. I think we are done. Is there anything you'd like to add before we go there? Swinging bull. Um, not much. Uh, just wrapping up a Thursday of trading here. Um, tomorrow's Friday. Looking to uh, see if there's anything important we should keep our eyes on. Um, tomorrow morning, 8.30 a.m. Eastern, uh, we do have an economic report being released on retail sales. So we'll, we'll see before what the numbers the are. Yeah, we'll, we'll see what the numbers are with the retail sales and then uh, compare them to the inflation data that we got this morning and see where we go from there. And we invite you to come on over to our Discord group, Penny Boys. Uh, we do major exchange. We do OTC. We do crypto. We do options. All sorts of stuff. And we're talking about economics. We're talking about stocks that are running. We are 
We've got alerts over there. Come on over, folks. That's why we make these shows so that you can see what we're all about so that you would be interested in maybe hanging out with us, right? Absolutely. We'd love to have you guys. Absolutely. I really enjoyed this this show, Jersey. Appreciate you having me and uh, be happy to come back anytime. Fantastic. And we look forward to having you folks back next week as well. Same place, same channel. Da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da. Batman. Cheers, y'all. <laughs> See you later.